Because I file saws for other people, um, I get to see a lot of different saws with teeth that are in a lot of different states of disarray. One of the most common problems that I see when folks send saws to me um, is um, incorrect or misspaced teeth. Um, you know, this usually happens when someone who's new to filing tries to do a major overhaul on a saw um, and we end up with what's sometimes called the cows and calves syndrome or big tooth little tooth. If you're just learning to file your own saws, you may be familiar with this problem. Um, usually it's not too difficult to correct um, misspaced teeth. With a little bit of meticulous filing, being careful to focus mostly on the larger teeth to try and quote unquote move them where they need to be to even out and correct the tooth spacing, you can usually get the problem corrected. But in some cases, the teeth are just so badly misspaced and sized so incorrectly that it, it can be very difficult to correct the problem, um, such as the case with the saw that I'm working on today. If you look at this saw, you can see that there are a lot of misshapen teeth. In this case, it's actually going to be easier to just completely remove all of these teeth and completely retooth the saw. Now, retoothing really isn't as hard as you might think. Um, as a matter of fact, in cases like the saw that I'm working on today where the tooth spacing is just awful, um, it really actually is a lot less work to completely retooth the saw than it is to try and correct this problem. Um, and you know, a lot of folks have a misconception that you need special equipment in order to retooth a saw, you know, tooth punching machines and, and the like. Um, really, that's not true at all. You can completely retooth a saw with nothing more than a mill file and a saw file, which is what you're going to need to sharpen the saw anyway. So that's what we're going to talk about today is taking a saw that's in real bad shape and giving it a completely new set of teeth. We need to start by removing the old teeth. For that, we're just going to go ahead and use the mill file. Now, if you have a saw jointer, you can go ahead and use that, but these are typically going to take a smaller file, which is going to be finer and going to cut less aggressively. So I usually start with a bigger mill file, and then I'll move to the jointer with the smaller file. And we're just going to file straight up the saw until we get all the teeth down. Now once I have the teeth mostly removed, I will switch over to the joiner so that I can make sure I keep everything flat. And I'll use this for the last few passes until I get down to the bottom of the gullets. Now one thing to keep in mind when you're doing this is that you want to check the, the plate, check the edge, make sure that it's straight in the case of a, a joinery saw like this. If you're working on large hand saws, um, you have two choices. It could be straight or the saw may have originally been designed to be breasted. Um, and if it's breasted, you want to make sure you file the heel and the toe down a little more and get that gentle heel to toe curve that a breasted saw typically has. Um, what you don't want is a concave edge. That's not going to work. So either straight in the case of joinery saws and some larger hand saws, or in the case of most larger hand saws, a slightly breasted edge. But your joiner will help with that last little bit to keep everything straight and get you down that last few uh, thousands of an inch to the bottom of the gullets. And once you have all the teeth removed um, and you have the edge that will be the new tooth line nice and straight or breasted if you're talking about a breasted saw, um, the next thing you want to do is establish the new tooth spacing. For this, I find it best to use some kind of pattern. Um, some folks, maybe, you know, you're good enough to be able to do that, do, do it by eye. That's not me. Um, I need some type of pattern to guide my filing. 
Um, there's a lot of different ways you can do this. I've heard of folks using all thread to guide the file, hacksaw blades. Um, I'm not really aware of hacksaw blades that are coarse enough to, uh, to be used as patterns for most, most woodworking hand saws, but if you have access to one, you know, by all means. Um, I use strips of paper, and uh, I actually cut this up already, but um, you know, the uh, strips of paper just have the tooth spacing printed out on them with a CAD program, and you can really do this in any program, and just print it out to scale. Um, and that's going to give us our tooth spacing. And again, this is going to be spaced for 12 points per inch. So what I'm going to do is uh, I simply cut this paper. I'm going to cut it into two strips. And what I really want is the section with the lines printed on it. Uh, if I was using a longer saw, I might have to make more than two pieces of paper and, and do multiple strips. Um, but for this saw, since it's only about 14 inches long, Two strips is going to be plenty. And I'm going to take those strips and fold them in half. Because this is how I want to sit them over the saw plate. Fold that strip in half. I also want to cut this strip right along one of the lines. That way I know that I can line that edge up with either the toe, the heel or the toe of the saw plate to get that spacing started off just right. And once the strips are cut, I just need to glue them to the plate. And I'm just going to use some, uh, some spray adhesive. This is just 3M77 spray adhesive and uh, make sure you have some type of backdrop just to catch the overspray. You don't need a lot of adhesive. Just make sure you get the paper. And uh, once you have the adhesive, you can go ahead. Let me find the, uh, the one that I cut. We'll start with this one. And we're just gonna put it on to the saw plate and we want to line it up so that that first line down here lines up with the heel of the saw. This stuff gives you enough time to work. It sets up pretty quick. It tacks up extremely quickly but it does give you just enough time to work and get it on there and uh, it doesn't shrink too much so I like it for this. You just want to slap that on there like that fold it over nice and tight make sure it wraps over the top of the plate nice and tightly because we're gonna file right through this paper and you want to make sure the next one again is cut works best to cut it first but I missed that step and just line that up if you need a second piece of paper you go ahead on there again wrap it over it's not important if it's not right on that original fold and then we can just go ahead and either cut off or rip off that extra at the toe you just want to make sure that's on there good. Give it a couple minutes to dry and then we now have a filing template attached to our saw. Once that glue has had a, a couple minutes to tack up, we can pop the saw in the vise. Now, this is going to be a, a 12 point saw, so normally I would use a a six inch uh, extra slim taper file I believe is what I would use for this size um, but I actually find it easier if you start with a slightly 
smaller file, maybe one or two sizes smaller. Because what we want to do now is basically just mark the location of each one of these gullets. I'm not filing to depth yet. I can't do that with this paper template on here. But what I do want to do is mark the spacing in the steel saw plate. So I'm going to use a file that's actually one size undersized. This is a six inch double extra slim for this particular saw. And I'm not concerned with rake angle or flea mangle or anything at this point. Now this is going to be a rip saw, so there won't be any flea mangle. But if it was going to be a crosscut saw, it still doesn't matter. I'm not concerned with that at this point. I want to mark the teeth where the location is going to be. Um, and I'm going to want to get them shaped properly. At this point, I'm not even concerned about rake angle. I'm going to keep this file flat at the top because I want to, I want the file to be able to file straight through. Um, I don't want to have to worry about, you know, maintaining a rake angle at this point. So I'm just going to file straight down. I'm going to keep the flat top and I'm only going to make one or two passes at each location at each tooth location. Um, because I want to, you know, I just want to mark the location of each tooth. Let me move this just a little bit lower in the vise. Because again, since we're not filing the depth, it can be it can be awfully low in the vise. And what I'm doing is I'm putting the corner of that file right on the, the printed line so that as I make a pass with the file over that line I'm establishing where that gullet's going to be and I'll just run down the whole saw this way making only one or two strokes on each line filing right through the paper here. Um, it doesn't affect anything at all, so don't be afraid to just go go right at it, file right through the paper. Put the corner of the file right on the line and just file right through the paper. teeth marked, we want to get this pattern off. The uh, Just a simple razor scraper works well for this. Just be careful around the handle. Then once we have the paper scraped off, before we go any further, we want to clean all the adhesive off the plate. So a little bit of mineral spirits takes the adhesive right off, cleans the plate up, gets us ready for the next step. So with the adhesive cleaned off, now I'm ready for the next step which is to sink these teeth to their final depth and establish the, the rake angle that I'm after. Now, I'm not going to do this all at one shot. Um, what I'm going to do is just make, depending on the size of the teeth, two to four strokes at each gullet, and I'm going to make a pass. I'm going I'm to sink the teeth in several passes up the saw plate. I don't want to sink them to full depth all in one shot because that's a good way to mess up that spacing that we just work so hard to get right. So I want to make sure I sink everything evenly. So in order to do that, I'm just going to make two or three strokes at each of these locations that I marked. And now I'm going to use my rake angle guide block to guide the actual rake angle. I'm going to file that rake angle in. So just a couple of strokes at each location.
Now you can see, just by making a, a couple strokes at each location, we're, we're beginning to get the general shape of these teeth, and we're keeping that spacing pretty even. There may be, you know, one over here with a little bit bigger flat or one over here, and that's the reason I'm doing this in stages and not trying to do it all at once, because I could make one pass down the saw, then I can come back and adjust you know, any that are a little bit bigger, a little bit smaller by making an extra pass on one or one fewer pass on, on something that's a little bit smaller. So again, with teeth this small, one to two strokes in each one of these locations here um, and work your way up the plate two or three times before you sink the teeth to final depth. So I've made one pass up the saw, two strokes per gullet. What I want to do now is I'm going to go back and I'm going to make another pass up the saw. This time I'm not necessarily going to make the same, an equal number of strokes on every, every gullet of every tooth. I'm going to be looking at the flats that are remaining. So for instance here, I might take just one there, two there, Two there, and now I see, you know, a little bit more flat here. So I'll go back, and I may hit that one again. I may hit that one again. So at this point, I may go, you know, I'll, I may do groups of a dozen or so teeth, move my way up, then work back a couple of teeth and look at them again, and then move some more, and then work back a little bit. So I'm going to be working now to almost remove these flats, but I don't want to, again, do it all in one shot. I'm going to move up and back and up and back and up and back so that I can try and remove the flats evenly and try and keep these teeth as evenly spaced as possible um, and keep them all at the same height. So that is basically the process of cutting new teeth in a saw. Um, it, like I said, it's really not as hard as it is sometimes made to seem. As you can see, it's just like filing. Uh, and, and a lot of times it's actually easier than trying to rehab um, you know, the existing teeth because if they're really badly shaped, it can be a lot of work and a lot of frustration trying to move those teeth around. Sometimes it's just easier to file them all off and start over again. Um, now, this saw is not done. All the teeth are filed, all they're shaped, and the spacing is right, but it still needs to be set, rejointed one more time, and uh, have the file, final sharpening done. But I've covered that um, in episode, in, in uh, part three of the sharpening series when we talked about sharpening saws. I, I did cover setting um, and jointing and finishing up the sharpening and, and then finishing up with the side jointing. So I'm not going to cover that again here. Um, I really just wanted to focus on, um, you know, talking about cutting in the new teeth and retoothing the saw. Um, from here on out, you know, from, from here, the teeth are really nicely spaced. Uh, the sharpening, setting and sharpening is really easy. Um, so that's about it. Um, the one thing that I will mention, um, you may notice the first few times that you do this, and, and even every time that you do this, that the teeth are not, I'll call it, 
um, machine perfect when it comes to spacing. There may be a little bit of variation here and there. That's okay. Um, it's actually, you know, very, very hard to get these teeth to be machine perfect spacing um, when you're doing this by hand. Um, you, you know, a machine that punches these teeth out um, is set so that it does get that spacing perfect. It's not the easiest thing to do by hand, but you can get awfully, awfully, awfully close. And as a matter of fact, I think that a saw that is hand filed, where the teeth are hand filed in like this, actually uh, feels a little bit better, feels a little bit smoother in the cut. Um, and it has something to do, I believe, with the, um, the harmonic vibration, um, har harmonic chatter, and I'm not, I don't wanna get into the physics of it all, but it's basically the same thing um, that makes a hand cut or hand stitched rasp um, feel better, smoother cutting, leave a smoother surface than a machine cut rasp with perfectly evenly spaced teeth. That tiny, tiny little bit of variation um, that comes from the hand cutting process is really what gives the saw that smoother feel, similar to the rasp. So um, don't be discouraged if your teeth aren't absolutely perfectly shaped like they would be off of a machine because it's very unlikely that they're all going to get that way. Um, but again, it's it's absolutely fine um, and, and the saw is going to cut beautifully, so don't worry about it at all. So I hope you give this a try. I hope this has been helpful to you. We'll see you next time.